One of the most important contexts for exponential growth is the idea of compound interest. In a modern capitalist society, you're always facing a compound interest in the terms of when you take out a loan for a car or a mortgage or whenever you invest in something. The first situation I have here is a really good example of compound interest. Importantly in this case, so we have an amount of money that we're putting into account. It has 4% annual, annual interest or APR, but it's compounded monthly. Importantly, what that means is that when you put money in this account, they don't wait until the end of the year to give you your 4% interest. They break up that 4% annual interest and actually apply the interest monthly. So then the formula for us that computes compound interest is A of T. A of T represents the amount in account. T is going to be in terms of years in this case. Equals P. This is your principal amount or the starting amount in this situation that's going to be $20,000. In that general form of exponentials we were just talking about, P is exactly the same thing as that A value, that starting initial amount you get when your independent variable is zero. And then times our growth factor which will be a, a bit more complicated, but you'll see its purpose and it should make a bit more sense when we uh, get into this context right here. It's one plus your rate or your annual rate in this case, that'll be 4% for us, divided by the number of times you compound per year. And for us, that's going to be 12, raised to the number of years times the number of compounding periods per year. So importantly, this idea of compound interest is one really important. You'll see it in context. It's like the one thing I think you really need to understand as a modern consumer is how compound interest is affecting your investments and your loans. Um, and then also this formula can seem a little bit intimidating, but just remember, this is exactly the same as A, B to the X we were just talking about. We have our initial amount, we call it P because it's called the principal. It's just the initial amount in the account whenever time is zero. And then this part right here is simply calculating the growth factor. What this again is doing is taking your annual rate and dividing it by however many times you're gonna compound per year. In our case, it's gonna be 12 for this example. You're dividing that, so you have 4% all year, but you don't get 4% every month. It's a yearly rate, not a, not a monthly rate. So we divide that by 12 to get that. The one plus right here is just making sure that we're taking a percent and we're adding that back on. It, it's exactly the same as, let's say if you wanted to add 5% to something. If you have a value and want to add 5%, you would multiply that by 1.05. The 1.05 represents 105%. The 1 is the 100%. The 0 0.05 will be the growth of 5%. And specifically, this will be the growth added on to 1 so that it is growing. This is also similar to that previous conversation we just had about growth versus decay. If you have one plus something, you know this is gonna be a growth model. Finally, I just wanna say, cause it's gonna be, show up in this situation right here. This T times N right here is the number of years times the number of compounding periods per year. So what this is really calculating is the overall number of compounding periods. Importantly, there's no place for us to put the 48 in this formula given this layout right here, but we will just translate this into four years. Though you'll see the role of the 48 when we put it into the formula right here. All right, so let's put this all together. So we know where our investment is for four years. We have $20,000, that is the principal, the P value. We have 4% annual interest that will help us with our R value over there. I'm just gonna throw all this information in and we'll look at it. So we have the amount in the account after T years is our principal of 20,000 times one plus our rate divided by N. So R in this case is 4%. We know that 4% equals 0 0.04. So the R in this case is 0 0.04. We always got to write a percent as a decimal. We're dividing that by the number of compounding periods per year. We're compounding monthly. So that is 12. And then for our exponent, we have the number of years, which is 4 times the number of times per year, which is 12. 
And importantly, then again, is that this is number of years times the compounds per year, but this is also equal to the 48. And I could have actually put that 48 in right here because always what this exponent is, these is the number of compounding periods you have, though generally we'll always write it in the formula as years times the number of times per year. So we have our setup, we have our principal amount, and we have our growth factor here. We need to uh, do the work on this first. And so uh, let me do that. So we have $20,000 put in this account. And then we have one plus 0 0.04 divided by 12 is 0 0.00333, repeating, but that's enough decimal places, I think. And then raised to the 48 for 48 compounding periods. This can be put together quickly right here uh, to give us 20,000 times 1.00333 to the 48th. And before I move forward, I just wanna make a quick comment about this as said before, is this 0 0.00333, this is the, the percent, which is 0.33% is the percent that's applied each month. It's that 4% interest, interest divided by 12. Then to get our final answer here, we just need to follow order operations, continue that. We have to apply this exponent here. And so we have A of T equals our initial amount of 20,000. Now times, I got 1.17301. 1 One important thing to say about exponential functions specifically is that when dealing with this growth factor or the exponent, it's really, really smart to use as many decimal places as possible. I'll usually use at least five decimal places um, or more, or just use my calculator to keep the entire number. And that's important because versus linear growth, like we were talking before, that grows, and you're, when you kind of round by two decimal places, it means your, la your final answer will be off by a couple decimal places. Because this, this fact that we're raising these to these sometimes extremely large powers, if your number is off just by a little bit, the end answer will be off by a bunch sometimes. And so for me, I always just keep a bunch of decimal places, five, six decimal places when I'm writing them down in order to ensure that my final answer is accurate by say two decimal places, which makes a lot of sense when dealing with money. And then multiplying these all together, what I get when I multiply 20,000 times 1.173012, um, actually I use the longer version in my calculator for that, but that's 23,460 and 23 cents. Again, this is one of the most important contexts when dealing with exponentials, specifically to be applied directly to the normal person's life. And again, just looking at this formula and how it fits into this and how they all work is you always have this initial starting amount, your A amount, that's the same through all exponential functions. The weird part is this growth factor. We have a one plus, which your percent rate divided by the number of times you're gonna do that compounding per year. So annual rate divided by the number of times annually. And then the exponent is the number of years times the number of times you compound per year, or in other words, the number of compounding periods over the life that you're looking at. And then finally, building off the idea of compound interest is the idea of continuously compounding. So instead of having a fixed number of compounding periods per year, we just say it's always compounding, always. The interest is always being added. If we take that formula and if we let n just get infinitely large, that formula will turn into this, the amount equals, well, still your principal amount that was put into the count, but this growth factor right here becomes this transcendental number that becomes really important, and this may be the first time you see it, but you'll see it more, E, Euler's number, to the RT. E is a transcendental number, like uh, like pi for us, it's a number that shows up and is really useful in mathematics. E is really useful in exponential and logarithmic situations. And I'll give you a definition of E here. E is the limit, 
as n goes to infinity of one plus one over n to the nth power. Importantly, you don't need to know this definition right here. This is a definition using the idea of limit, which comes from calculus. But the idea is that this, which by the way, this for you should look extremely similar to this part right here. And the game is when that, when the n goes to infinity, you get this, when the n gets infinitely large. But importantly for us is that this is about 2.7183. Just so we can see an example of this continuous compounding or continuous growth formula in action, we have this example here where we're being told after six years of accruing interest, we now have $42,000 in an account and it earns 5% APR compounded continuously. This is the important thing for the situation that we're talking about. And again, we would expect to hear the, the annual rate and then be told how many compounding periods per year. Is it weekly? Is it monthly? Is it quarterly? In this case, we're compounding continuously, which means we're in the world of this formula right here. The question we're being asked is what was the initial amount or the principal amount invested? So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to set the amount in the account equal to this 42,000. So that's the amount of the value of the account what we don't know is this initial amount, this P right here. And then in the formula for continuous compounding, we have our Euler's number E, and then raised to the RT. And in this case, this is 5% times six years. And this won't take a lot of work for us. Uh, we're just getting used to really the Euler's number here is all we're doing. I'm first gonna multiply those uh, values in the exponent together. So we get P, to the times e to the 0.3, or 0 0.30. And then what I'm going to do now is just plug this into my calculator to evaluate that. So use the e button on my calculator and raise it to the 0.3. And when I did that, I got 1.3499. Then if I divide both sides by this factor of 1.3499, I get that my principal amount is 31,114 and 36 cents.